and you talk to people and then you produ- you had to invest money you were investing because you were hiring a, a, a how do you call it a, a, the person that mix the the colors is yeah, it's a what? colorist a hairstylist colorist hairstylist so you have to invest some money but i guess you had some capital because the prior company was sold probably you have some revenue share in there and so you have some funds to 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 finance the new concept correct Okay, so the the response was good, and then what was next? So um, if you think about, it, we had like three, like four, four steps before we decided that we were gonna do this. First, it was a little bit of like preliminary re- research about the industry, who were the players, a little bit of just understanding what the industry, who, how big was the industry. The second thing was asking like our close people what they thought about the idea. Then online surveys. And then fourth, the fourth step was this test. So after all of those kind of like made sense that it was something feasible and it was a good business and it was of interest to people, then we said, okay, now let's really start the company. And if you think about like most of like those four steps, it, it, it was really mostly time. The cost of the consultant was not much because it was just really helping us prepare 50 hair color applications. So it was not a significant investment to, to test the concept. I see. So it was mostly time. Okay, so you are almost there, and now you have to get with your other three friends. So we were all working together on this. Yeah, but now it comes the moment when you have actually to take the decision, yes or no. So it was difficult to get to the point of yes or no. It was 100%, was 3 to 1. <laughs> At the very beginning, two of them were kind of like hesitant about this, but then the more the more we went into the different stages of like validation, then the more excited they they became into into this concept. So by the end of like once we got the results from the test, everybody was really excited about like going forward with this business. So what was the next to put together the company, sign a contract, an agreement between so many, four of you? There are so many steps. So then, you know, like we at that point, we decided that we, okay, we need to incorporate the business. We set up all of the membership agreement, um, kind of define, um, then start building like so many different things. Uh, we had to come up with like our suppliers, uh, formulas, a team of people that will actually now we had to like find experts in the field. We knew where to get people from the technology point of view, uh, people, the programmer, the initial programmer that uh, joined early on. Um, so really like there's so many different steps about just getting started as a business. Yeah. And and you were the CEO or you were, or you were, you four guys, you know, we're having different responsibilities or areas and, you know, it was, everybody was doing their own stuff. We were, I mean, it was a small team. And so we were all working in the same office, like sharing all the notes. I, I, I've been since the beginning, the CEO of the business. So I've been more of the active day-to-day uh, management uh, responsibility. Right. So what was from there, what happened? I mean, you had all the, the company all set it up. You had lawyers. You have documents because that's very important to have contracts, correct? Of course, of course. Otherwise, something happens, somebody forgets or I misunderstood something, and that's where the problem arises. So the first thing was like setting up our our like operating agreement for the uh, we are set up as an LLC, mm-hmm. a limited liability corporation. Uh, so the first thing that was setting up the corporation. Then think of just getting um, the basic set of uh, legal documents to start hiring people, so employment agreements, uh, independent contractor agreements. So, but then at that point, it was really about like finding vendors, trying to see where are we going to get the hair dye, uh, who's going to be making these formulas, and then testing the samples that we had from our country manufacturers that we were working with to validate that the product was going to be of the highest quality. Did you, did you need to raise seed money at the point, or are you still using your own money? We were pretty much using the proceeds from the previous business exit um, to fund this business. So you never went to VC, so nobody. So you still, you four guys are 100% owners. We have had additional investors. Okay. So then it's not only, but then at the very beginning, at that stage, it was only only the internal co-founding team. Right, like, so uh, you were able to bankroll the project. 
Exactly. All right. So when I read about the project, when I got into your website, I mean, it's, it is very elaborated. I wouldn't say complicated. It's elaborated, but it's simple. So who or how did you come with this uh, uh, concept? I mean, the, not the concept, but to materialize your idea into some uh, something tangible like an e-commerce website, which is very elaborate underneath, but the people don't need to know that. So I see that amazing. And walk me through the process because something I really would like to learn. So in our case, the very first thing we, we had to come up with, it, what was going to be the online care consultation process? And that was learning from like, like from the colors. Okay, what kind of questions do you ask? So basically the very first stage of our business and every business is different was really trying to understand the product and, and, and how it all works from, because we were, remember, we were trying to emulate what happens at the salon. Right. So we really had to learn what was going on at the salon, at the salon, so that we can actually come up with a, with a way that we could scale that experience and lower the cost and make it that you can have the same results uh, at home uh, with your own flexibility. So the very first stage was really trying to learn all of the rules of hair coloring, so that we could actually replicate and create a system that will be able to do the same. So the first stage was designing our consultation process. What are the different questions that matter? How do they impact the formulation? Uh, creating all of the algorithms that depending on the consultation process was going to trigger a different formula for each client depending on what they answered. In our case, we we are doing, we are one of the pioneers in the consumer packaged goods, goods industry in the CPG world. Uh, that is actually doing mass customization where every single bottle and every single bottle that we prepared is uniquely individually blended instead of like the alternative, like when you buy some, something uh, at the drugstore, it's been actually millions of those same colors have been prepared. So then right. there's the whole concept of the one size doesn't fit all and that's why the box color has failed. In our case, every single hair color application is unique to that client. So. What that means for us as a as a business and an, as an operation is that we had to make custom blended hair color for every one of our, of our clients, and then go back to the test where we're actually doing this manually. We realize that like doing this manually is very time consuming. It's not scalable, and it's expensive, and it's prone to mistakes if you measure things incorrectly. So from the very beginning of the business, we had to design an engineer equipment and processes that could make hair co custom made hair color affordable precise and uh, fast right that's so that's we amazing. had to create our own equipment so basically the very first stages was also working to see how we're going to be doing that you, so tell me how long did it take from the time that you found, found out that the, or decided okay this is the business that we're going to jump into it to the actual launching, because the actual launching would be when you go public with your with your website, correct? Exactly. So Our, then in our case, we decided to go forward with this business in December of 2008. Um, so <laughs> that's when we actually incorporated the business. Um, and we officially, officially launched in September of 2010. So two years, so kind of. Give or take like a little bit less than two years. Right. Obviously, our official like press release and everything announced in September was like we, we were in soft launch a few months before. Right. Now, what was the most difficult part of this stage? Of the R&D? Of the pre-launching. On the pre-launch. Pre like, I mean, the e-commerce e part was something that came more natural because we had built a large-scale website that had millions of uh, concurrent users. Right. So that, that that part like was less challenging, but then what was more challenging is that many company oh, there were many different things. All of the things about powering uh, a custom made product and business model was something that required a lot of work because um, we were figuring things out from from the get go. Uh, yeah. So in our case, uh, dealing with mixing uh, on demand 
different hair dyes was quite complicated. Uh, we had to engineer equipment. The first version of the equipment that we designed uh, didn't work. We had to adjust it. And then that set us back like a few, like six months, probably. Right. Wow. So eventually we, fig we figured it out, but then there was always going to be unknowns. Interesting. Many things that come to my mind while you're talking. One is that you guys were very methodical, very rational in terms of finalizing, taking decisions, which means that launching a business is not just a matter of passion and I love it and I'm going to do it, but You can have the passion, but you need to really, really need to go step by step and do your homework and find out, you know, what's right, what's wrong. And that it's, it's a lot of work, isn't it? It's a lot of work. And I think, I mean, you have to have the passion so that, because it's a lot of work. So you have to be excited about what you are creating and what's the ultimate goal. But sometimes, I guess, being rational helps you take the right steps. I remember something that a lot of people assume that entrepreneurship is something that is, like, by definition, very risky. And I remember uh, a professor in the business school here at uh, UCLA making the opposite point. You try to, like, make sure that you not take unnecessary risks by asking a lot of questions, testing things, making sure that you take as many baby steps. Ultimately, there's risk in your like in your And if you're an employee at any company, that right. company could be downsizing. So there's no that that doesn't come without any risks. But then you definitely have to like try to figure out how do you minimize your risks. And I don't think that the definition of an entrepreneur is somebody who takes disproportionate risks. It's just knowing that there's a lot of risk, you try to minimize them. Right. Interesting. So now you launch. Now is the first day that the website is goes public did you feel something in particular at that moment uh was some celebration yeah of course it was a celebration because it was it was definitely almost two years in the making um and then it's a lot of work to finally when you see the first client um placing an order is really rewarding. how long how long did it take for the first client it to... was the first day It the was first the, day, the first day that we launched. It was there. You were watching the... We were watching the, 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 the screen. Completely. <laughs> we were completely. Like, a, and then, like the NFL. The, the, at, yeah. at that point, we, we didn't have, like, basically, we, did, we didn't have any production employees. It was really just like, okay, we have one order. Let's, 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 let's put it together. Uh, we didn't have anyone doing customer service until like, okay, now we have clients. Let's hire somebody who can help us answer the, the phones. How did, how did you market it? Online. So we, we started, <laughs> and kind of remember that that was a little bit of our background of uh, online advertising. Okay. But I have to say something. We, we thought that that part was going to be easier because we came from a place where we had we, we were spending millions in, the, uh, in, in online advertising. Right. But then it, it actually was something that we discovered that we, we didn't know much about beauty marketing. So... That was a, quite a like quite challenging. But that space is, I mean, we could say in Spanish, salvaje is terrible. I mean, the the beauty industry is is a cutthroat industry, correct? There, that's the impression that I have talking to many people. Maybe you don't. I mean, it, it may be difference in, in in the in the retail environment of like salon operators. Um, in in. Mike, I mean, there's a lot of competition, uh, but at the same time, I think at least from the people that work in the industry, I have only positive things to say about the people that work in the industry. Um, in our case, Price Grabber was a very utilitarian tool. You came in to compare prices and see the find the best merchants, and it was like an informational tool. Here, people buying hair color, mostly for emotional reasons and for like, Uh, improving your image and it is really more of a, an, an emotional purchase right so then making the switch of the advertising to address those points versus just the fact that like okay we thought okay custom color is this is better than the alternative we realized that we had to explain a lot more why is it better so were you the first in that space yeah we're the first Is still the first? You have competitors now. We have. We are the only company who's doing custom blended hair color. 
Uh, so basically, we still are the only company doing exactly what we do. So you're talking about what eight years ago, or how many years you are? Yeah, now? basically, we launched in 2010, and you still are the only one. 